Hey guys, it's the day after Christmas. I hope everyone had a uh, very Merry Christmas. And uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting today because it's uh, quite, quite nice out. As you can see here, we have a temperature in Wisconsin, oops, temperature in Wisconsin of 43 degrees on December 26th. So my first video, if I remember correctly, it was like 17 degrees out. And then it was the uh, upper 20s on my next one. Now, two weeks later, <laughs> it's 43 degrees out for the, uh, the thermometer on my car. So anyways, uh, the reason for this video today is uh, I, don't, I, I don't have to work today, but got to get some other things taken care of. And of course, on Christmas, one of my headlights went out. Now, I, I don't know if you remember in my past video that I had uh, mentioned that this uh, lovely HHR of mine had a lot of quirks and for some reason I keep going through headlights. Um, unfortunately this time neither my high beam or my low beam are working so I'm hoping it's just the headlight bulb but I'm going to investigate further but I'm going to get a new headlight today and change that out anyways because whenever problems like this start happening it's just a matter of time before I have to change it anyways and since it will give me an opportunity to show you how ridiculous it is changing a headlight on a 2010 Chevy HHR. As a matter of fact probably on any HHR. So uh, we're going to go take care of that and hopefully we can get this uh, done while we got some sunlight and uh, decent temperatures out. Nice day. Looks like everybody wants to get their car washed. I definitely like to clean my car again, but I'm not going to wait that long to get my car washed. Well, looks like a busy day here at Farm and Fleet, the day after Christmas. I guess I, uh, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised by that. Ah, oh, well, unfortunately that was a bust. Didn't have the uh, bulbs I like to get, so there we go. Ooh, it's breezy out there. Gonna have to uh, gonna have to try somewhere else. Uh, I think I'm gonna give Meyer a shot and see if they got the ones that I want. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna have to go up to Auto Parts Store, which unfortunately is the most expensive place usually to get the headlights. But um, for those of you that don't know, um, there's a big difference between the different types of headlights that uh, you can actually get. So usually I end up just going with the, the basic headlights and the reason being is I, I know with the uh, the light throw that they're they're not exactly the best the best bulbs that you can get. Matter of fact uh, the headlights on this HHR are pretty much in general they're just kind of crappy. Um, but I, the, the big thing that I learned and I learned this lesson really quick um, is that you upgrade to go kind of like to the I think they're called like the silver star or almost like the uh, you know the blue headlight look or the you know basically when you upgrade from the the basic bulb to the you know the further throw and the, the brighter beam um, a, a little detail if you actually read on the back of the package is the the life of the bulb um, the standard just your basic bulbs I found range anywhere between 515 uh, hours of expected uh, lifetime of the bulb and the essentially the $25 bulbs the, the high-end like the silver stars or the you know the ones that kind of look like the, the HID uh, the ones that kind of look like the HID bulbs um, they can have an expected run life of about 300 hours now I know for most people that is not a problem that's you know probably a, you know it could be anywhere up to a couple years worth of driving but for me right especially this time of year um, being a courier almost all the driving I do is at night so on a daily basis I can do anywhere between um, well actually not even just night driving but if you know it's a snowy day or a gloomy day um, not to mention the HHR just every time you start the car the headlights turn on and half the time I forget to, to turn them off when I don't want them on so you know on any given day I can do anywhere between like four to ten hours of driving with my headlights on so if you do the math on that uh, buying a higher grade bulb that only has an expected life of about 300 hours of runtime. I, I mean, you're talking a matter of weeks that that bulb is going to last. And as I'm going to show you guys here in a little bit, having to change a bulb every six weeks on a car that has such a complicated um, process to change these headlights is really ridiculous. So I just stick with the standard bulbs if I can. Um, Farmer Fleet unfortunately didn't have the ones I wanted. They only had Phillips ones. 
$12.99, price wasn't bad, but I looked on the back and the expected uh, runtime, uh, the life expectancy of the bulb was only about $600. So I'm just going to go uh, see if I can uh, find something a little bit better over at Meyer. So again, as to be expected, day after Christmas and Meyer is crazy busy. Okay, see for instance, this is exactly what I'm talking about on here. You have the standard bulb life, they give you four bars, then it's two, then it's two, and then it's one. And look at that one, Silver Star Ultra, no life. Super bright, super bright, and no life. So let's see what the basic looks like. H13 basic rated life hours, 1,500 hours. Average driver will use their headlights 100 hours per year. So just to give you a little bit of a comparison here, the next bulb up is the Extra Vision. It was like $2 more. Supposedly it gives you a little bit further throw, a little more, more down road distance, but look at this. So the one on the right is the standard, as we showed, 1500 hours. Here's the extra vision. Come on, focus. Expected hours, 700. It's less than half. And it's only two bucks more. And this one here used to be the uh, used to be the top of the line, the Silver Star. Three hundred twenty-five. Nice. Yeah. So I had uh, success at uh, Meyer. I was able to get my Sylvania bulbs and so just one uh, one other little tidbit of information is is I know they always say to do your headlights in pairs well I did buy two because they don't have a twin pack now I'm probably only going to put one in and keep the other one because I really don't know when which one is going to go out as I mentioned before I was having a lot of problems with the uh, um, with the uh, headlights blowing a lot so I'm only going to put in one but uh, the basic bulbs, they don't sell in a two-pack. So the interesting thing about that is the next bulb up, those ones with about half the life expectancy, um, yeah, they sell a two-pack of those, and buying the two-pack is cheaper than the two basic bulbs. So I think it's kind of a scam. So you're going to get two bulbs that have half the life of the, the basic ones for a little bit better price, but you're not going to get anywhere near the amount of life out of the bulbs as you would with the basic ones so it's just interesting that they don't put the basic bulbs in a two-pack so anyways time to go home glad i'm not going left You might be wondering what, what that is. That is my 2008 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited X. And that's a story for another time. So, as you can see, passenger side headlight works. Driver's side does not. And would you look at that. There is literally no way to get to the headlight except for right under there yes that, that is that is 
ridiculous. I have to jack the car up, possibly take the wheel off, remove a bunch of the interior fender well aligners just to get access to my headlight. Whoever designed that, you should look for a new job because Chevy should not use your design on any more cars, that's for sure. All right, well, basically, to be able to uh, change the headlight on a 2010 HHR, this is basically what you're going to need. Worst case scenario, going to need my lug wrench, my jack, my sockets, and my little screwdriver. I'm hoping I can do it just with this and, of course, I almost forgot, and that. Yeah, to change a headlight on an HHR, you need that much stuff. That's ridiculous. I'm hoping today I can get away with it by just jacking up the car, turning the wheel a bit, and uh, pulling the, uh, the fender wall back and getting my hand in there because I don't want to have to take the wheel off. So, wish me luck. Here we go. And right here, here's a, a little trick to make things just a little bit easier. The reason I have my, uh, my impact driver and a three-quarter inch socket on it is because my, oh, that was nice, my jack has, it's hard to see here, but hang on a second, put this actually, all right. So my jack has this little end on it that you're supposed to use your lug wrench for to jack up the car. Well, I found a little easier way to do this than that. And it's actually strong enough to, to lift the car without a problem. So, if you look under the car right here, right there, there's a little arrow. There's a little arrow there for the, the jacking point, so we're going to get that under there. All right, so we appear to be in the right spot. Let's jack this puppy up. So like I said, I'm, uh, I'm hoping I can do this without having to take off the, uh, the wheel to get it. I'm going to pull that screw, that clip, that clip. I think there's another screw in back that I might have to get to. And of course, underneath here, there's a couple too. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. Now, see that one, one little screw right there that we gotta get out. And now, as you can see, the fender liner swings freely. So, let me try and, this is so stupid, I'm going to try and swing it back, if I get it caught on anything, and get it so I can get my hand back there, alright, so, let's see if I can grab a, a light here. Headlight bulb. It's way the hell. Back behind there. So 
so we have to reach up and it's a little, a little more difficult than I want it to be. So follow the wire up to the top. I'm gonna get a little light in there. So So it's gonna be up at the top there. Yeah, snake your arm up there. Yeah, I can't feel it unfortunately with the gloves on. So one glove comes off and blown away. No, 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 jet. Unfortunately, that's what happens when the weather's nice in December in Wisconsin. It's gotta be windy as hell. Alright, so, stay. Alright, so, get, get, twist your arm up, twist your arm up and in there. Now, I don't know if you can see that or not, but, I got the bulb, and you just gotta bring the bulb down. And you literally gotta try and, you gotta try and not, you put the new one in, I try and not touch as much stuff as possible. Man, that is ridiculous. All right, guys. Unfortunately, the sun went down, and uh, uh, it's at least blocked by my garage, and I'm starting to get a little bit chilly out. So I want to try and get this done as quickly as possible. But like I said, I know they normally say to do them in pairs. I'm only doing my driver's side one today because that's the one that's out. I just changed the passenger one a couple months ago. As a matter of fact, I changed both of them a couple months ago. I don't know what's going on with my driver's side one. But, like I said, there's something with this car. I've This is probably going to be my fifth headlight now that I've changed on the driver's side. But we're going to get this new bulb in. It's supposed to have 1,500 hours of uh, rated life. Well, if I get half of that, I'll be happy. But we'll see what happens. So. Now, you got to remember, too, you do not want to actually touch the glass part of the bulb, the oils from your fingers. If you do actually touch the bulb, it will heat up and they can actually cause the bulb to shatter inside of the housing for your headlight and you just you don't want that to happen so don't touch the actual bulb and try and maneuver it back up into the headlight housing you don't really have to worry about touching the bulb when you're taking the old one out but taking a look at it and I don't know if you can see that too well or not but the coils are pretty well junk so definitely time for a new one all right so the new bulb is in and what we're going to do before we go through all the work to put everything back together again is i'm going to make sure that it works i'm going to make sure that it works first because i've made that mistake in the past and then i find out oh hey <laughs> the bulb isn't working, I gotta do it all over again. High beams, low beams, off, flashing high beams. Alright, now that we know the bulb works, um, one thing you don't want to do is let, leave it on too long because those things get really, really hot. But now that we know it works, we're just going to put it back in, close everything up, and hopefully not have to do this again until spring. I can't stress this enough. Do not touch the bulb with your fingers. So what we're going to do is we're going to swing it around. Don't touch anything. Guide it up. And then I'm going to look in the bulb here, or in the housing, and we should, I don't know if you can see that, but there it is, it's back in. Now the tough part is just trying to get it to twist back in. Yeah, this is the fun part. Come on. You know you want to go back in. 
Just have to line up the tabs on the, the light bulb the right way and should be fine. Come on. Come on. Ah. It's usually not that difficult. There we go. Alright. So it's lined up. Give it a twist. And she is locked in. Headlights are working. So, there we go. That's how you change a headlight in a HHR. Not fun when it's really, really cold. I lucked out that it's in the 40s today, but it's still pretty chilly to be doing this. Alright, just gotta reverse what we did. Put all the pieces back in. You should end up with one, two, three, four clips. And three of these little bolts. It's chilly, they're dirty. Gloves are going back on. And then again, this is a great little time saver. Okay. Otherwise, you can do it by hand. I prefer the easy way. Ten seconds tops. Yeah, so anyways, that is the ridiculous way you have to change a headlight in a Chevy HHR. So now, um, to do the passenger side, which of course I'm not going to do today, there is a trick um, that you don't have to do it. It requires you to get into the engine compartment and what you have to do is you have to pull back that uh, air intake tube and if you have small enough hands, which mine are just barely able to fit in there, you actually can get to the headlight through that. It's a tough chore and when the time comes I have to change that one, I'll show you how to do that. Um, but yeah, expect to get some pretty good scratched up hands when that happens. So, anyways, um, I think that's going to do it for this video. Um, I figure uh, changing a headlight on HHR is an interesting job in and of itself. I think whoever designed the HHR, and I know there's a couple other cars that are like that too, whoever designed those headlights that you can't change from the engine compartment, dear GM, please don't hire those people anymore because that is a ridiculous design. I can't really think of a logical reason that you have to do it that way. Um, yeah, so anyways, that's my thoughts on that. As I've said before, like, comment, subscribe, click the little bell if you want to get alerts. Help me grow my channel because I'm just starting this thing out and I'm hoping you guys enjoyed this video. I know a lot of people don't really care about a HHR and it's not the car that they have, but just a little craziness from Chevy. Thank you.